Happy Monday, New Life, and welcome to a brand new week. My name is Dan Levy. I'm a pastor on staff here at New Life Church, and I believe that God has an encouraging word for you today. Over the course of this week, different members from our pastoral team are going to be unpacking God's word with us using the SOAP method that we learned from Pastor Doug last week. And just as a brief reminder, uh, SOAP is simply an acronym for reading God's word that, that stands for S is for scripture, O is for observation, like what's happening in the text. A is for application, like what does this mean in my life today? And P is for prayer, using scripture as a launching pad to talk with Jesus. And, and today we're using one of my favorite passages of, of scripture, uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 to 30. And to get us up to speed with uh, where we're about to read, uh, Paul and Silas are advancing the kingdom of God. They're spreading the good news of Jesus all throughout uncharted territory in the Greco-Roman world. Yet as they're faithfully following after Jesus, something unexpected, painful, difficult, speed bump in the road takes place. Uh, a miracle takes place through their ministry. A person doesn't like it. All of a sudden, crowds don't like them. They're stripped of their clothing. They're beaten. It says that they're severely flogged. And then to top it all off, they're thrown in prison. Talk about unexpected as you follow Jesus. Now, right now, I recognize that, that uh, we're not in prison, um, but this is a time of pivoting, a time of the unexpected, a time that uh, is really difficult for a lot of people. And so I believe that this passage today actually really ministers to right now. And so I'm going to read this passage, Acts chapter 16, verses 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So going back to soap, that's our scripture for today. Now I want to point out a couple observations. The first thing is this. Verse 25, it says that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God at midnight. Notice the time, midnight. This is significant, I think, uh, because notice what happened just before this. As I noted, they had a really, really long, painful, and unexpected day. They, they were stripped naked, they were beaten, they were severely flogged, and then they were thrown in prison. And then the reaction to all of this difficulty, all of this pain, all of this unexpected mess, they responded with prayer and with praise. Now that's powerful. Another thing I want to draw out is this, is that as they're praying and as they're praising... It says the word suddenly in verse 26. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. Not just Paul and Silas's, but all the prisoners were set free. Now, with those observations in mind, now I want to uh, apply this to our lives today, your life and my life. And so the first thing I want to draw out is, is this, is that... In this passage, uh, Paul and Silas uh, viewed their difficulty as an invitation to draw near to the presence of God. In this unexpected mess, they drew near to Jesus instead of running away from Jesus. And, and powerful things happen when this takes place. In fact, I recognize it could be very, very difficult to respond to difficulty with prayer and with praise. I know personally for me that, that that's true, but in this passage, they do the opposite. In my life, I've personally seen that this is the key. When I look back upon God's past faithfulness in my story, I am filled with faith and I'm also filled with the impulse to praise. You see, when I'm only viewing my life through this sliver of time of difficulty that I'm facing, well, then it's easy uh, to, to, to uh, run away from God or to get frustrated and upset but when I take a step back and I say, man, God, you've been faithful here. You've been faithful there. You've shown up here. Man, God, you're faithful. Then it fills me with praise and it fills me with faith. I get the feeling that Paul did exactly that in this passage. He looked back to the moment that we learned about this past Friday. When Jesus met him 
on the road to Damascus with his grace and his love. This is something we have to do in our lives. We have to look back on God's past faithfulness and it fills us with praise and faith in the present. Another thing I want to draw out from this passage is that as we uh, lift up our praise and our prayers to the Lord, his power shows up. His power comes down in our lives. In fact, uh, we see that they were set free in the moment that that they were praying and they were praising. Now, in life, here's the reality. Sometimes God answers that way. He'll, he'll change the circumstances. But if he doesn't change the circumstances, we can be confident to know that he will change us in the process, meaning he will give us a supernatural joy and a supernatural peace that isn't contingent upon our circumstances, but contingent upon an unchanging Savior who will pour those things out upon us in our lives. In fact, it, it, we would see that even though Paul was set free from prison here, God changed his circumstances. There were other instances where Paul was in prison and God didn't immediately set him free from prison. He didn't change the circumstances, but we would see, especially in Philippians, that God did give him a supernatural peace and a supernatural joy. And I believe that God wants that for your life and my life, no matter what we're walking through in our lives but it comes through praise and it comes through prayer. It's a weapon for you and for me to fight difficult circumstances. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence. And God, today we, we start this week by doing exactly what we read about. We lift you up. We declare that you are faithful. You are good. You are involved in our lives. You have sealed us with your Holy Spirit. You've got good plans. God, we look back upon your past faithfulness and we declare, God, that you've been faithful back then, which means you're going to be faithful today and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. And so, God, we praise you in advance for the breakthrough that you're going to have in so many lives. And so, Jesus, we love you. We thank you for who you are. And I pray that today you would especially bless each and every single one of our listeners pour out your spirit upon them, meet them right where they are, fill them with faith, fill them with praise, fill them with strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We love you, church. God bless you.